Oh yeah, we are back. That's right. Lovers of horror film, the genre, one of our favorite genres of all time. That's right. We have special guests have returned. Owen from the Action Elite and April Wright film director and horror lover herself. She knows what she's talking about. She knows her stuff. That's right. As well as Owen. I'm just a knucklehead. I'm just here to hang out. But today, <laughs> on this episode of Is It Underrated? Ed, 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 we're talking about H2O Halloween. That's right. 20 years later, way back, 5 billion years ago, <laughs> 1998, way back, uh, way before the What If sequel uh, genre was even a thing that like it is today with you know Terminator Dark Fate and Halloween 2018 and that seems to be the buzz nowadays but you know 1998 nobody was doing it around that time and uh, you know they took a crack at it did they succeed we're gonna talk about it this movie's directed by Steve Miner uh, written by Deborah Hill John Carpenter Robert Zappia and uh, who and you also pointed out uh, the screenwriter as well right Owen Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it was Kevin Williamson, wasn't it? Which is yeah. Right, right, right. And of course, he's I'm not... Yeah. Right. And I'm not surprised. I mean, Scream was such a huge hit, and that kind of revi helped revitalize the slasher genre, right? So they're like, hey, let's have some fun for the 20th anniversary, and let's go bring old Myers back here. We have an extremely ridiculously young Josh Harnett, Michelle Williams... <laughs> <laughs> and a bootleg cameo from Joseph Gordon-Levitt, which kind of cracked me up in here. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, of course, returning as Laurie Strode here. All right, quick plot synopsis for people who have not seen this. Obviously, we're still gonna we're going. This movie's been out since 1998, so we're gonna talk spoilers. <laughs> uh, but let me go ahead and uh, briefly read this. Here we go. Twenty years after Michael Myers' massacre in Haddonfield. Lori Strode faked her own death, traveled to California, and took on the identity Carrie Tate. Michael discovers Lori's new identity and travels to California to kill his sister. Lori must now take on her brother with her son's life at risk. All right, so I'm going to talk about, well, for, hold, hold on a second. Everybody's here. What's going on, guys? We've got Looney323 in the house, Eric Plantier, Cody. He loved... H2O, we got some H2O uh, fans here. Jake Hall, what's going on? Adam Evan, Adam Evan, excuse me. John Martinez, Heather, and Omegon32, all the badasses here hanging out. So I'll talk about my first impressions uh, of the movie, and then uh, we'll get to we'll get to Owen, and then we'll swing around to April, and after that we can have a little bit more fun with diving deep into the plot synopsis and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, now, I have heard that, uh, I don't know what you guys have heard, um, but I heard that Jamie Lee Curtis really was excited for this kind of project and for this idea, and that something changed along the way, and at the end, she was quoted saying, well, it's a paycheck movie. So I'm not sure in detail <laughs> what happened there. You know, I don't know what happened. Maybe she had a different vision first, and then they, they yeah, turned it into something... Okay, okay. I can tell so, you about it in a minute if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So really quickly for me, uh, I was you know I was young, perfect age. I went to the theater with a whole bunch of my buddies, and we all had fun watching this in the theater. The audience had fun watching this in the theater. Uh, you, you you felt satisfied. You weren't blue balled. And here's the thing: I am approaching this <laughs> discussion. I am approaching this deep dive. And experience with this movie without resurrection being around okay and and we'll get into that a little bit later but right now <laughs> we're discussing Halloween H2O resurrection does not exist and we're talking about just this film as a whole and how we experience it first and then we can have some fun with that later but yeah I had a lot I had a blast uh, watching it I bought it uh, later on DVD watched it again had a had a really good time with it. It's just a fun slasher flick, and there's a lot of a lot of iconic moments in there. Then I rewatched it uh, last night to prepare for today, just to kind of because it's been a long time since I revisited it. And you know how it is here on the channel. Sometimes if we haven't watched something in years, we'll revisit it for a sh for an episode, and we're like, "Ooh, man, that didn't hold up or whatnot." Still really enjoyed it, but I'm gonna go crazy with the finale. 
because it's fucking awesome. <laughs> the, 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 the final act, I, I like wrote down bullet points, okay, which we're going to get to uh, a little bit later, but uh, I will pass it to Owen. Go ahead, my friend. Okay, yeah, so uh, we were talking about Jamie Lee Curtis now. Interesting enough, I think this idea is that she used it in Halloween 2018, where initially she was going to be like uh, an alcoholic mess, okay, uh, which she kind of is, but uh, and they didn't want her to have anything, but they wanted to make her have something to lose in this one, so that's why she had the son uh, and everything, and you know she had the job, so uh, right. otherwise she's just going to be totally off the rails in Halloween H2, which I think they really ended up doing with. Halloween 2018, um, so I think that's really what it was. And I know John Carpenter was initially going to direct this one, and he asked for like 10 million, and they were like, no, uh, oh. <laughs> and like a three-picture deal and stuff like that. And then he oh. ended up eventually walking away. Um, okay. So that didn't happen. But uh, yeah, I saw this in the cinema. I think I saw it twice actually. Um, uh, I always liked it. It's my third favorite in the franchise. It's like the original nice. Halloween, Halloween two, the original Halloween two, and then this one. Because I think Halloween H2 captures the spirit of the original film where it, there's no real gore in it. It's more him stalking and watching and being Michael Myers like it was in the original. And it just has the same sort of atmosphere of it. And there's a couple of sort of meta moments like you've got uh, uh, Janet Lee from Psycho showing up, who of course is Jamie Lee Curtis's <laughs> mom and saying everyone's entitled to one good scare, which of course Sheriff Brackett says in the original Halloween. Um, uh, now, what's interesting is I have the script. I was looking for it earlier, and I couldn't find it. But the, uh, an earlier version of the script, uh, where I think the, the more nautical title of Halloween h two makes more sense, where the finale takes place in the gym of the school in a swimming pool. And uh, she, Laurie throws a javelin at Michael Myers, and he falls into the pool, and they close the lid over the pool, and he drowns. Um, and that was... You know the original ending, and I was like, "Oh wow, okay." So I thought, "Well, maybe that's where they got the H two O from, because you know, you know the water there." <laughs> it's yeah, you know, talking about how he would eventually die, but uh, I think what yeah. they ended up doing with the final film worked a lot better. Um, oh yeah, and, and uh, I thought that uh, it, it always sort of bothered me that they never sort of referred to Halloween four, five, and six. They kind of just ignored them, but initially. Jodie Lynn O'Keefe's character was going to be studying it and bring it up in class and talk about it. Uh, and it was going to initially mm. be a part of the storyline, but then they were just like, no, nah, let's just cut it out of it and you know, we'll just pretend it didn't happen kind of thing um, and just brush over it. Um, but yeah, I really like this one. The only thing which kind of uh, bugged me about it is I hate what they do with the mask in it. Like, There's like a couple of masks uh, and it looks a bit weird, particularly in towards the end. The, the mask looks kind of strange and um, I still think the original one is the, the best mask. I also it's like still the did. best. Yeah, I also like what they did with the score, um, the, yeah. the the orchestral version. It's not quite as menacing as the original, and I think there were some rights issues to the music because I have the score on CD, but it's called Portrait of Terror rather than huh. Halloween. It's like it's a different title, so uh, okay. I don't know. If maybe once Carpenter wasn't involved, that the rights got all mixed up or something. I'm not sure what happened behind the scenes. So. Um, so yeah, so I really like Halloween H2. I, I, I found Josh Hartnett and the young kids actually very appealing. Uh, normally there's, you know, like a douche, like uh, in the Friday the 13th one. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I, I actually really uh, liked all the characters and they were sort of appealing. And you got the kid from Jumanji as well. Um, and yeah, of course, you got Robin there from The Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Death oh, by man. Ice Skate, which is definitely new. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I like that opening scene. And of course, I've got the nurse in the opening scene from the original Halloween, um, which I like. Yeah, that's going to sting. Um, yeah. Pretty good kill. I like that. Yeah. So, but yeah, uh, it's funny you you brought up Janet Lee because it, it's kind of funny. She has this, the car from the Psycho movie. Mm -hmm. That's the same car. And if you listen closely, when she walks away towards the car, they play music from music, Psycho. Yeah. You can hear it, which is kind of funny. I was it's definitely Kevin that. Williamson there. It's all, all meta references. Yeah. What was the last time you watched the the movie? I've watched it. Not like not Psycho, but H two O. Oh, H two O. Uh, I haven't watched it like this year, but I've watched it tons of times. Like, but I've seen it like twenty or thirty times, so I know it pretty well. So I didn't need to watch it for tonight because you know I watch it about once a year. So. Right. Um, right. 
So, but yeah, you saying. brought up a you brought up you brought up a good point. Like the original mask is still the best, and it's like this mask in this one. We've seen worse masks mm -hmm. than the one in this one, but they you know they could have did. A, I think they could have had a better mask. I mean, mm -hmm. even though I was entertained by the film, but there's been worse masks. Let's be honest, <laughs> there's yeah. been worse masks. Yeah. All right, April, thoughts on the movie. Mm -hmm. So the original Halloween, the 1978, is one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, just because they did so much with so little. Uh, John Carpenter was so involved with every aspect of it, including writing the score we were talking about. Deborah Hill, his partner, um, helping to write it, to produce it. And, um, and they just made, you know, really a horror masterpiece and really set the tone for a lot of things to come. So it's, it's just absolutely one of my favorite films. Now, I have to admit, <laughs> um, I think somewhere after they came out, I kind of became a horror film sequel snob because mm. they started getting really bad. Not just the Halloweens, but the Friday the 13th and all these franchises that started with really great creative original films. They started spinning out all these sequels that you would just hear how bad they were and so a lot of them I didn't see. Um, mm. I just, you know, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a bad horror sequel snob. Someday when I get older, <laughs> I will watch all of them in order. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll catch up on what, whatever I missed. Um, but, um, but anyway, so I had actually not seen any of the ones in the middle when I saw this. In fact, I don't even think I had seen the second one um, before seeing this. Um, but I did really, but I liked that they brought Jamie Lee Curtis back. And so that was kind of the thing for me that attracted me to this and, and made me want to see it, that they were going to close out her story. And so, like you said, there's a new Halloween that got rebooted in order to close out her story on a second timeline, <laughs> uh, ignoring this one, but this is the first time they tried to do that. And I, I know I liked it when it came out because I bought a DVD and I only buy DVDs if it's something that I really liked and I knew I would want to see nice. um, again in life. So I know I really liked it when it came out. Um, when I was watching it again, um, I think it does have a lot of interesting layers in it that make it fun for me to watch. So um, you guys already talked about Janet Lee being in it. And I, I did look it up and it said she and, and her daughter, um, Jamie Lee Curtis, had been together on the love boat and in the fog and then in this. And when Janet Lee appeared in this, she had not been in a film for 18 years. So the fact that they put them back on screen together and, and, and brought them together, because that's kind of because of Janet Lee and Psycho is sort of why John Carpenter and, and Deborah Hill got Jamie Lee Curtis to be the star for this because she was the daughter of a famous scream queen. So it is sort of that scream queen tradition thing coming full circle, you know, that they made a choice to do. And I also think it's a super strong cast across the board. Um, Michelle Williams is in it. Josh Hartnett, I, if I'm not mistaken, it was his first film. Um, Joseph, Joseph Gordon-Levitt was a, a child actor, but I think as sort of a teen, this was sort of his first role. And he does have a great kill, like you said, with the hockey um, boot. <laughs> um, and then um, even like LL Cool J as the guard, I don't know that he had been cast in anything before this. And of course, he went on to have a little TV career and all that. Um, so the casting, you know, sustains over time. But I think the, the, for me, when I started looking up, you know, who are the pieces and, and the director, Steve Miner, you know, he started directing some of the bad sequels, Friday the 13th, part two and part three is how he got his start. And then, uh, you know, a couple films here and there, but he's mostly directed a lot of TV. And, and if there's one criticism about this, it does kind of feel like it could be TV, especially nowadays. Mm -hmm. By today's standards, this could easily be something on TV. Um, and also, uh, the influence of Kevin Williamson, which you guys talked about. So apparently he had originally written a treatment for it and he may have also done passes on the script that didn't end up getting credited. And you kind of feel like 
in this era, in the mid 90s to late 90s, he really was the person putting the footprint on this genre with Scream, with I Know What You Did Last Summer. Um, and then, of course, he did Dawson's Creek and you have Michelle Williams in this and in Dawson's Creek. And and just the the idea of the teen relationship drama coming into horror in a, in a different way where kind of the drama is almost more prominent than the scares and where it's sort of not really winking, but sort of there's layers to the awareness of other things that came before and that style that Kevin Williamson had. So I feel like I see that all over this and in in the the style of the time, you have to put this film in context that that's sort of what the genre was doing at the time. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you put all those pieces together for me, sort of bringing back Jamie Lee Curtis to face off against Michael Myers, you know, once and for all, um, you know, I, I think everything about that was very satisfying. And when I rewatched it a couple of weeks ago, preparing for this, um, I felt like it all held, held up in, oh, context, yeah. in context for the time. Um, it's, yeah. it's very done. It's very well, well delivered. Now, the other thing you're going to get to the, the killing scene at the end. And I want to say that was another thing that I really observed watching it again now. So as you know, I, I made a documentary about stunt women, uh, about Hollywood stunt women. And one of the stunt women that's in my documentary named Donna Wheeler, she was Jamie Lee Curtis's main stunt double for her whole career. And so when it came around to this film, Donna was the stunt coordinator. You don't have women stunt coordinating that often on studio films. So, um, nice. so that was the power of Jamie Lee Curtis, bringing her stunt woman into the project. And so I really noticed that, you know, with my, you know, perspective that I have today on stunts in particular, and especially on women's stunts, I really felt like watching it again, the, the way the action worked, the way the kills worked, and especially the way that um, Laurie Strode's character was empowered and how she fought and what she did and the level of, you know, action and fight sequences and what happened was really great. And, and again, especially for that era and especially for a female character. And I think that a lot of that was the hands of, uh, of the female stunt coordinator, you know, really pushing those limits and really trying to do great things for Jamie Lee and for this character. So I, I was, I had an extra level of appreciation um, for what was happening there when I watched it. Um, nice. Recently. <laughs> All right. No, thanks for sharing that. That's pretty awesome. That is awesome information. Uh, but yeah, you know, I got I got some little bootleg no notes over here. Hopefully, I can read my my writing. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, I enjoy the the beginning of the film, especially with the with the with the the bootleg Donald Pleasance narration. <laughs> yeah. But it was really good. It was great opening credit scene where you see all the newspaper panels. I mean, the, you know, and on, the, then on the wall. Is, he, he had already died, so they had someone mimic him. Is that what I read? Uh, yes, but also the the original uh, audio or negative or something from the film had been damaged, so they couldn't even use that. So they just had oh. to re-record it and do something okay. that sounded like him. And I think he just passed away shortly before the movie came out as well. Oh, okay. But yeah, it was a great scene. I like how that whole mm -hmm. setup That's kind of given, you know, people who are new to the franchise, yeah. like, oh, this happened. This, you know, this Although went I down. I just feel like that opening nurse scene went on too long, at least by today's standards. It, it just seemed like a really, really long opening sequence. Um, yeah, I, I guess so. A little bit. Because she went to the next house. Because they kind of set it up, I guess, in a way that she was going to get killed in her house. Right, and then she's then she's fine, and then she goes to the next house, and he, that's where she dies. So it's kind right. of, maybe that's why it, it felt a little lengthy. That could multi, be it too. Multiple parts. It's a multiple part <laughs> <laughs> in the opening. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, but um, uh, you know, again, the before the whole theme song kicks in, and you have the the newspaper clippings on the wall because they're it's all, they're in Loomis's room. I love how the cop goes, Michael Myers. Yeah, right. <laughs> like before the theme song kicks in. I mean, that was great. That was great. Uh, and, you know, it, it was, I thought the movie did well in terms of showing Strode still, you know, struggling, you know, having nightmares, waking up. She looks into reflection. She sees Michael there. She looks at, you know, people still walking drinking. down a dark alley. What was that? 
drinking as well. She's you know she's having yeah. multiple glasses of wine and everything. Yeah. The other yeah. thing I liked in the beginning after those, I think it was after the first kills when they when they they're trying to show the contrast of now it's like this nice you know utopia family oriented world and I think they had like a real long tracking shot to kind of bring you into the contrast of the worlds. I thought that was a nice opening to the film too. With the Mr. That. Sandman song. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Everything's that fine. Halloween too. That one was a Halloween too. That was used. I think it was Mr. Sandman. It's been a while. Yeah, I wouldn't I be surprised. It's yeah, a little so throwback to the second movie, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was nice to see Strode, you know, that she's still struggling, you know, as yeah. as anyone would struggle after experiencing yeah, that. And be. she's very yeah. she's very pr- protective of her son, you know. He wants yeah. to go out and hang with the, you know, he wants to be a teenager. And there's a, and there's that conflict, you know. He's just kind of like, can we try to move on? You know, he wasn't a dick though, which I like. They could have easily made him, you know, really unlikable yeah. and obnoxious, and he wasn't. And I thought, no, actually, he's right. He's actually correct. And she yeah. move on. But then, of course, that you know, she <laughs> couldn't. No, that's like, a good point. That's a good yeah. point. He he wasn't a dick in terms of. Yeah, here's a here's a good example. The granddaughter from 2018 <laughs> telling her to get over it. <laughs> I was like, really, seriously, in that movie. Uh, but, uh, you know, yeah, but yeah, he, go ahead, go ahead. I haven't seen him. You you guys maybe can fill me in. So I read in parts three, four, five, six, that because they couldn't have Jamie Lee Curtis in him, that they created a character that was her daughter who was the one Mm -hmm. battling him. Right. So, so in that part, she had a daughter who was oh, Jimmy. <laughs> and then they're, they're like, okay, forget that. She didn't have a daughter. Now she has a son. <laughs> <laughs> we reboot this. So We're going to reboot I, it. I guess that's kind of interesting. There isn't really what is a it? logic to it. The timeline yeah. is like such a mess. You're just like, what? And, and what is it with Myers and restrooms in movies? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in this movie, he was in restrooms. And then Rob Zombie. And then the 2018 movies. <laughs> that's his hangout spot, man. That's where he, you yeah. know, changes his clothes. You know, he upgrades time, vehicles. You don't, you don't attack people in their toilet. That's me time. That's that's not cool, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh, uh, chat and says uh, yes. When Mr. they, they oh, go ahead. in the car at the gate and with LL Cool J, it's like you know, oh, there's a madman on the loose. What? This car is like pulling up. No, oh, that doesn't look suspicious. You know, let me go look for him. You know, like that. That was kind of, kind of a stretch, but. Mm. And Myers just walked by. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. He like, right in. in the background. You know. He's like, was that like funny. a phone call with his girlfriend or something? Yeah, like reading out like movie scripts. Because he was like a writer and he'd be like writing books oh, or scripts right. or something. Yeah. Old, isn't it? Yeah. And he'd be reading it out. Plot line for a movie script. Yeah. It's like, so, yeah. it like a romantic script. You know. Yeah. And stuff like but, that. But Ella pulled it off. Like he. Yeah. He made that awkward sort of not maybe quite logical scene work. Yeah, it was good, and it's funny. I always, I always like to put, you know, point out the fun fact that, you know, we have a black character that survived two horror movies because everyone forgets he survived in Deep Blue Sea. So you have this movie, <laughs> and you ate my bird, Deep Blue Sea, where he was the cook. Come on, black character as a security guard and black character as a cook didn't die in two horror movies. <laughs> I think we should applaud that. <laughs> I love Deep Blue Sea. Yeah. I know, isn't Deep Blue Sea fun? Oh my oh, god, okay. that's a that's a fun movie. Um, uh, but yeah, you know, and it, she 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 meets with her boyfriend. They have lunch, you know, Strode, and she wants to tell him about her past, but she can't bring herself to do it yet until later in the movie. But she brings up that she's seen, you know, help groups, you know, shrinks therapy. They do show. Uh, I mean, they do have her talk about that kind of stuff, uh, which I think is very important. You know what I mean? A lot as 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 awesome as it is to see her as Rambo in the 2018 version, and her performance is great in the 2018 version. A lot of people thought that that was kind of I felt kind of fast. You know, like from her to go through in, in from there new, to yeah, in the new relaunch, she's more like a doomsday prepper. She's yeah, like, she's like Sarah Connor of. Halloween, where yeah. she's like, yeah, you know, I remember thinking that I was like, oh, she's coming, and she's been prepping for it for years, and you're like, mm. like I liked that one too, yeah, uh, but you know, it, it's interesting, different choices for for mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that's a better analogy, uh, Sarah yeah. Connor, in that one. 2018 does <laughs> have know. some good kills, though. I mean, despite what people say, but 2018, Michael Myers does stomp on a guy's head, which I think is probably yeah, the that's best the ever that's kill. the that's the best kill in that movie. That was amazing. Just the yeah. head just shattering. Yeah. That was great. But another reason why I wanted to bring up this movie in terms of it being underrated. Now, underrated doesn't necessarily mean. Yeah. We think it's the greatest movie of all time, or the best in the franchise. That's not what we mean. And I, look, I looked no. it up on Rotten Tomatoes. Fifty-two percent from critics and forty-nine from viewers. So that's really? like a fifty-fifty score. Totally right. No, no. I remember I got good reviews at the time. I remember I think Empire got five like stars at the time. Seventy-five. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, definitely. Seventy-five, seventy-eight percent. It should be. So definitely. yes, it's underrated. Yeah, it is. And it's it's just one of those things where I can bring it up now just for fun. I feel that when the movie came out, it was fun to watch. It obviously is not better than the original, of course. But it was a fun idea, and it was a fun movie to watch. But I think the stink, the stank of Halloween Resurrection has attached itself to this movie. Mm. And I think it's tainted this movie. Unfortunately, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Ending. Right. I wouldn't be surprised if that's why it's, uh, you know, people don't really, not everyone. I mean, we enjoy the film, but there's a lot of people out there that don't really look back fondly on this because it has that attachment to it. It just kind of ruins it a little bit. Mm. Not for us. We can choose. You know, we could pull a Joker from the Batman and go, yeah, you know, <laughs> from 1989 Batman. We could do a Jack Nicholson. Um, but I think that that did not help its case, I, mm. I feel. And another reason why I wanted to choose this for an underrated is because no one really talks about this movie. Yeah. You hear more talk about the other sequels because they're bonkers, <laughs> <laughs> especially the one that Paul Rudd is in and the both both cuts of those. I mean, that's it's it's so yeah. biz, it's so bizarre, right? You, you hear more talk about that. No one really talks about H2O, which is, really, which is why I wanted to bring it up. But... People recently, well, not recently, but in 2018, people have started to slowly talk about H2O because they're comparing 2018 H2O. Now they remember now, mm. you know, whether they're fans of H2O or not. Now they're starting to remember and they're comparing because there's uh, there was a discussion brought up now. That's another reason why I chose this movie is because now people are talking about Halloween H2O now they're talking about it now they're comparing it because some people were like I feel H2O did it better as much as entertaining as 2018 is some people feel in terms of the development of the character was a little bit more satisfying and realistic in H2O than in 2018 right Me, so there's I this so. debate mm -hmm. you think so yeah I do because like yeah. I said H2O captures the spirit of the original um, as there you so go. somebody said in a comment here or was it uh, uh, archive of YouTube videos has good shooting locations. The settings are relatable and slightly nostalgic, sort of like a school and scream, and it feels like you know Halloween. And there is that sort of feeling of, of Halloween, in it, and that's why I, um, I I like it. I think the 2018 it, it, it's not bad, but I just think I prefer Laurie as a, a character as when she was yeah. you know, Carrie Tate and everything, and I prefer Josh Hartnett's son. Um, to whatever the character's name was and whoever played it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's like 2018, it's a very well-made movie. Soundtrack's phenomenal. You get some good kills. It's yeah. a well-made film, and it's I, I find it entertaining. Uh, it's just I enjoy H2O better, and I'm, I'm sure yeah. I'm in the minority of that. Hold on a second. got a super chat here. Adam Evans, thank you, my friend, for supporting the channel. He goes, off topic, I just hope Halloween Kills won't be a nostalgia thing because of the characters they are bringing back from Carpenter's Halloween. Mm. So, we'll see. Agreed. We'll see what happens. Yeah. We'll see what happens with I'll that. I'll be there opening night, though. So. Yeah, you got to message me, man. Who are they bringing back? Have, have they said? Who do they have? Like, yeah, it's in the that? trailer. You see, uh, well, Sheriff Brackett, where he's retired. He's like a thousand years old now or something. Uh, oh, okay. And then uh, <laughs> Tommy and Lindsay. Uh, grown up uh, from okay. the original, so um, yeah, so right. I, I, I'm intrigued. It looks like there's going to be I, some good kills. Can I tell you the funniest thing? This ties back to what I was saying. So Halloween, like I said, one of my favorite films. I've seen it probably a hundred times. Like it's just one of my top favorite of any genre, any film all time. Um, and I had seen number two 
you know, maybe once and then sort of forgot about it. And then when I was watch rewatching this, um, because I hadn't, you know, kept watching it or whatever, I was like, wait, she keeps saying Michael Myers is her brother. And I do have to say that, like, because I'm such an original Halloween kind of purist in my love for the film, she wasn't his brother. He, there was a sister and there was Michael Myers. And right, he killed right. the sister and then that yeah, was Judas, it. Yeah. And he put his attention on Laurie Strode because he was already in his old house and she came up to put the key under the mat or whatever. And so because he saw her, that's why he fixated on her. Okay. Right. And so that was the story of the first film. And then uh, when I saw this and she kept saying, he's my brother, I'm like, where did that, did they just make that up for this film or where did that come? And then I realized that had come in part two. Part two. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't like that. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I guess it's there, and, and Jamie Lee Curtis did part two, and it became part of it. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it's um, kind of like but, they did that with Spectre when they made Blofeld like, related to James Bond, and you're like, what? They're not related. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah you, you, I don't so, like whenever so they kind of do that. It's in there. Yeah. I, I get it's, you know, part of the whole thing, and it's not mm. a chapter that they threw away, so it's there. But, but being somebody who's just really more about the original and, and that, mm. that that was the thing that fixated Michael Meyer not because yeah. he was crazy and he knew he also had a sister who was adopted. So he needed to go find her because he had killed the other, you know, like it, I, I just don't like it. I don't like that logic. I don't like that. You know, it's her real brother. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's too, too far down the road, but, but, um, but yeah, I'm I'm very much a purist around the original, and then I right, like right, this, right. This one sort of gave her a chance to finally um, confront him and defeat him as an older, you know, older woman and older character when he came back to get her. So for me, those two kind of work. H two O and the original really work together in that way um, for her character, which was the whole objective of the whole thing to give her a chance to confront him one on one and and kill yeah. him once and kill him once and for all. So mm -hmm. we think anyway. Um, so I yeah. like that part. But yeah, it did throw me for a loop because I was like, wait, her brother, did that really happen? And then I had to go back and watch two. And I'm like, yeah, I guess that they did come up with that there. But I don't yeah. know about that. But yeah, I don't I know. actually like the second one. I thought I thought the second yeah, one was Yeah, I like the second one too. But, but making them related. Right. Like, that's a little weak. But mm. whoever thought of that, somebody. But did. I, I think, I think there's no. Go back I think there's no going back now. I think it's going to no, be like that not. forever. <laughs> No, not, oh man but no no that was a good that was a good point to bring up there and because of the time because of the time there there is some cheesy bad jump scares in this movie not as bad as the paul rudd halloween that had like what 30 jump scares in that movie oh, something <laughs> there was like that, yeah. so many jump scares in that movie what is the paul rudd now sixth I'll one. That one next. that's sixth? the curse okay. of michael myers yeah that's six and there's uh, two versions of it and the producer's cut right. and the neither is like good I, actually, I feel like i might have actually seen that one but mm -hmm. have probably have you probably yeah, have in my brain there's a couple of cool <laughs> kills though i mean someone gets uh killed by like a combine harvester thing in it and the guy gets electrocuted so there are a couple of good kills in oh it. yeah i kind of remember that oh the head blowing yeah. up uh, that was fun yeah yeah yeah. but uh <laughs> that movie is so bonkers man uh but anyway anyway but yeah there you do get some cheesy jump scares here and there but it's not as bad as you know, you see some. I like jump scares. Definitely. I, I, you know, I, I enjoy them. What's the point? Huh. <laughs> not when you're, you know, when you get a phone call and it's like, <laughs> oh, or it's, it's a cat. And you're like, it's whenever it's a cat. And you're like, oh, bloody cat! <laughs> cat. <laughs> oh man. Uh, let's see here. Where are we at here? Uh, yeah, Mike, Mike Meyer sneaks into the school, just walks right back, right by L O Cool J, just chilling. He just walks right by him. <laughs> and then, of course, you know, we get to uh, some iconic shots here. Really good shot, really good shots in this movie. Yeah, I like that. You definitely get some great iconic shots in the film. And, of course, you know, it's time to pick off the teenagers. And uh, he, he does his thing. That's right. Stabity, stab, stab, stab. I like the mask there. Yeah. 
Uh, someone in chat said there were four masks used yeah, to, in I this movie. Did you know that? Yeah, <laughs> some of them were apparently enhanced with CG. Um, and I think I know what? exactly when the part that was. Yeah. Um, no way. How there, funny is scene, that? There's a scene towards the end. You know, whenever Laurie and Michael are at a door and they're looking at each other through the window, and Michael comes up and it's the first time they sort of come face to face with each other. And the mask he's wearing there, I was like, what the hell? That's not the mask he was wearing earlier. Um, right. Like this shot This mask. shot right here, right? This iconic shot? Yeah. This one? See, Bam! No, wait, no, 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 that mask was okay. Okay. No, there's a, no, great no, shot, though. Yeah, that's a great <laughs> shot. No. It's, it's, it's one of the best parts of the film, yeah. you know? No, there's one where you see the mask, and it's really stupid looking. I can't remember where it is. Damn it, see, now I should watch this movie. <laughs> a couple of years since I watched it. I can't remember the scene. There's a scene where he's wearing a mask and it just looked really stupid. It has like no facial expression on it or whatever. It's, uh, it's the worst one. But yeah, you know, it's time to go after the teens. It's time to hunt the son because it's his 17th uh, birthday. So it's time to go after him because Laurie was 17 in the first movie. If we're following that continuity, his nephew. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> and uh, I enjoyed this kill, the impalement kill. there. Yeah. Him just lifting up the boyfriend. Yeah. He's been it. That was really good. I enjoyed that. Yeah. That was a good and some, some great shots. You know, some pretty good cinematography in the film. I enjoyed it. Where are you going? Yeah, you know, we're having fun here. That's what these movies are all about fun. Now, it's time for me to kind of go insane here. So. All right. You're going to do the ending? <laughs> Yeah. Hmm? You're gonna go oh. to the end. Yes, it's it's okay. time. Do it. So <laughs> again, I haven't watched this in a long time. So watching it last night, I was entertained. I laughed here and had fun. I was I was enjoying the movie. And Jamie's always great. And then when it got to the finale throwdown, I forgot how badass <laughs> the finale throwdown was. I was just like what? She sends the son and daughter to go away. Sends them out to 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 to. She could she could have drove with them and got away. She's like, no, fuck this. Okay, Send, yeah, th fuck this. She sends them out, closes the gate, grabs the hat, the axe, busts the button so that Myers cannot get out, and then walks back up the hill, the 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 the, the, the driveway there. Gets to the gets to the top. She stands there holding the axe. The light is coming on her. You see a dark, shadowy silhouette behind her, and she screams out, "Michael!" And right after that, the theme song kicks in, and I said, "Fuck yes! This is so why. Bad. This is why we are horror fans. Yeah. It's because of moments like this." You know, and she goes in there, and we finally she she's like, "Fuck this, I'm done. I'm coming. I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill you." Like I said, that's what this whole film was about mm -hmm. was her chance to, you know, confront him and once and for all and take yeah. care of business and get rid of it. I mean, that's she's yeah. set, you're, you're right because yeah. she's been the victim in the other film. So so again, you have to skip over the ones she wasn't in, but one and two, she's kind she fights. She's the heroine. Yeah, but she's pursued. She's victimized, and then here she flip. You know, in that moment you just described, she flips it around, and yes. now she's like, "No, I'm the one coming for you, Michael Myers." That's right. So, That's yeah, right. Exactly. I mean, this this is like this. I mean, I'm I'm pr yeah, pretty sure going. I'm gonna get it's I'm gonna get a lot of flack for this. I'm gonna yeah. get a lot of flack, and that's fine. We have to be honest here. But in my opinion, this confrontation finale fight throwdown. In this movie, whether you like the movie or not, you have to agree, is the best confrontation fight throwdown in the entire franchise up to this point, oh, in yeah. my opinion. I'm talking about fight throwdown confrontation, in my opinion. it's In, in, in 2018, I thought it went on too long. Searching no, the house, didn't... going to room to room. Yeah. It wasn't kind of was getting bored. Like it's more powerful in H two O when she's like Michael, uh, and, yeah. But she doesn't do that in this one. She doesn't really have that moment where you're like, yeah, go kick his ass. And you know, right in twenty eighteen, yeah, yeah, in twenty eighteen, yeah. So it never quite lives up to, which is why I prefer yeah. H two O. I'm sure everyone will disagree with me on that, but I have to be honest here. Well, I, I mean, in, in well, terms of, I, I enjoyed about this one, like it, it all, it's almost like the confrontation had its own chapters. 
like this happens and then it keeps going and then there's oh. like a whole next chapter and then there's a whole next chapter like so there's all these sort of like pieces to the confrontation which is really cool how how all that action is designed so yeah yeah and you know all three of us we love action which is probably like we <laughs> probably like really like this scene a lot i'm not a big fan of action you know? no? <laughs> no yeah i, I knew you were fond kind of guy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you remember that uh, NH2 they actually used some of the music score to Scream 2? Oh, uh, did they? In, this, in the finale, yeah. I don't know what the, the issue was. I've never been able to sort of find out what the... Oh, the, interesting. The, the must be some copyright issue or something. Like, with the music oh. Why it was called Portrait of Terror. Maybe. But I remember when I was watching it, I was like, that's music to Scream 2. Um, oh, okay. They kind of they cheated a little bit there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, she comes back in there and Myers comes down like a ninja. Are you kidding me? This is fucking awesome. I don't what care that? if it's not realistic or not. <laughs> Myers is a ninja, and I'm loving it. Right? And, and, and they go at it, man. She hits him with the axe. He stabs her with the knife. I mean, this is like April pointed out. This is several different sequences of fight. This is a fight. This is how you do not give the audience blue balls. This is satisfaction. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is just phenomenal. And this is a straight-up scrap, man. Like, she threw, she threw knives at him, you know, a whole bunch of different knives at him. Look at, look at this. We're going to go. We're going to fight. This, this, we're going we, we gonna, we gonna to get it. I mean, this is phenomenal. You know, she even kicks Myers in the nuts. <laughs> he kind of makes a funny face there. <laughs> it's made me laugh. <laughs> Myers won... Where yeah, she's hiding under the tables, uh, and he's yeah. on top of the tables. Uh, and, yeah, and, they're right there. And again, Love it's that. one of those things when you when you have a woman stunt coordinator. You know, she's thinking, "How is Lori going to fight as a woman? What is she going to do? What mm -hmm. is she going to use?" And I, I think that's also what makes this so satisfying because it does feel real. Like it doesn't feel like, oh, she suddenly got ninja skills too or whatever. Right. You know, it's just, um, it, it, it is a great action, you know, fight sequence. And then it keeps going. It keeps going, baby. Like here it comes. She just comes out of nowhere, stabs him like eight times. Eight times stabs him, pushes him over the balcony. He falls all the way down. I mean, we're still going. This is phenomenal phenomenal and he's like, look at this look look at this fight look they're swinging they are swinging this is so great and then the then she the runs is the way she thought she killed him the first time in the original mm -hmm. halloween right know? so right oh there but then it keeps going <laughs> yeah and then she runs down there to the 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 you know done, so double tap triple <laughs> triple stab or whatever to finish him off and cool jay he's actually survived and he grabs her he's like no 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 don't he's dead whatever no, we ain't done. <laughs> the cops showed up. Meyer's body's loaded into the van. She t she comes out, guns and bullets. Well, she doesn't shoot anybody. She brings out the pieces, takes over the van, drives off. She wants to make sure this motherfucker's dead. This is yeah. phenomenal. I think people forget how entertaining this finale is. Yes. All right. He wakes up in the van. She puts on the brakes. He flies through the windshield, and then she runs him over. <laughs> yeah, <I'm talking. laughs> this is phenomenal, right? right. And oh, of yeah. course, you know, I'll let April talk about the ending part. Of course, the the cherry on top. Go ahead, April. What happens after that? Are you talking about she beheads him? Before that. <laughs> well, it's going to lead up to that. <laughs> But yeah, I like that moment where he's kind of reach. He's pinned, you know, to the tree, and he's kind of reaching out yeah. for. I mean, that loan would have killed him. I mean, the car lands on his spine. I mean, he's dead. <laughs> well, yeah, he's yeah so of course. You, when you, when you, again, you, when you talk about action sequences, so first you have a hand-to-hand -hand combat with weapons sequence, and then you know you think, okay, he could be dead, he could whatever, but she knows he's not. So then it goes into the next chapter of the of the action sequence, which is now the car sequence the car stunts all that so then that's yeah. like part two but then it's not done then it keeps going yeah it's phenomenal and he's all pinned and she comes around there and he reaches out and for a second he's like it almost looks like he has some emotion in his eyes he's reaching out to his sister and she reaches out her hand to touch his hand and then she's like hold on man oh fuck this dude <laughs> oh wrong clip sorry <laughs> here we go Bah! There could be only one Highlander style, son. Yeah. Phenomenal. See the head rolling on the ground. 
boop, right in front of the camera. She stands there looking like a badass. Credits. And that's the end of the Halloween franchise. Or is it? <laughs> yes, goddammit. <laughs> it bloody well <laughs> should be. I actually, when I rewatched a couple weeks ago, I had I'd forgotten that it went that far, that she just completely... You know, beheaded him, and that his head rolled. And I just, I thought that was like the perfect ending. Because again, at this one, you're, you know, it, it does keep going. But at with this one, you're supposed to feel like she got him once and for all. She killed him. It's over for her. Her, yes. her entire character arc is done with this film. But of course, as we know, it keeps going. Unfortunately. And then you got the space time continuum going on another <laughs> branch right now. <laughs> <laughs> space time continuum <laughs> i like that uh but i know like we can back to the future i know i'm <laughs> i'm going to continue to choose now now can you watch resurrection and laugh at how bad it is and get some entertainment out of it you can there's actually fans yeah, yeah, for resurrection it. it's the only one i don't watch uh, i think i watch <laughs> maybe twice oh. I, I find it awful oh, oh it says i have a limit on my b movies he's like i have a limit man uh but i don't know uh myers is allergic to rappers he just can't kill rappers in his movies yeah, man you know maybe in halloween kills they should have little wayne up in there or something you know and then they, you know take myers out he just can't do it uh, but yeah, I, I, resurrection does exist and it is the stink on that, that, that is on this movie, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. However, we as film fans can choose what we want. We don't have to go all in and say, Hey, Terminator Genesis is canon and it's my favorite. No, you could say, Hey, only Terminator one and two happened, baby. You know, you could choose as film fans. Yeah. Uh, you know, but, uh, <laughs> But yeah, way more satisfying, way more satisfying uh, yeah, cause uh, finale resurrection, than uh, twenty. Resurrection like undoes everything that she went through and what everybody went through. Yeah, it's so, like it's a complete waste of time. So and yeah. it's really, really reaching with that plot. That that writing, how to get out of that. Oh, it's another guy. He's got something yeah, over his mouth. He can't talk. I mean, that's reaching even for Halloween. Yeah, like really, really. <laughs> yeah, even for a Halloween sequel, that's reaching. Yeah. You know, you, you, so. you have a level of disbelief, a suspension of disbelief, but then you're like, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, uh, Samurai's positivity is awesome. Well, thank you. <laughs> Uh, uh, but um, but yeah, it was definitely a lot of fun revisiting the movie. And even though I was enjoying it along the way, that finale kicked in and reminded me, this is why this is one of my favorites in the franchise and it doesn't get talked uh, enough about. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, just, I just looked up on Rotten Tomatoes, the 2018 Halloween is like 79 critics and 70 audience. So it's getting higher ratings. But I think... Yeah. I think what you what you were saying is true that you have to put it in context of the time period that like a horror audience today is going to like that and rate that higher and then newer, this movie yeah. came out before there was rotten tomatoes so these are all retrospective reviews mm -hmm. not sort of do i love it time, when it comes yeah. out and um and i think context is everything so you put this in context with i know what you did last summer with Scream and Scream 2 and this movie, they're all kind of in the same family that was the tone and the style of these films at that time period. And if you watch all of those, like those four films together, watch Scream, Scream 2, I Know What You Did Last Summer and H2O, you'll see that it holds up just as much as the rest of those, um, you know, because that's just sort of, you, you got to put the time period of what was in yeah. style. Urban like, legend. Urban that's Legend. one of your favorites. Oh, you like that? Oh, one. I love Urban Legend. Legend. That's another one that's terribly rated. We could do. We could do. Yeah. Oh, that's really? It. Is it? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you have it in front of you? Let's just look I it up just for fun. Since right we're now, right on the website. Yeah, Urban Legend. I actually really loved. Um, and when we looked it up before, it was really low. Oh no! I must have forgotten. Okay. Yes. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> urban legend was uh i I watched it uh earlier this year again and uh okay, i was so having it was goofy fun same year as this film urban oh wow legend. look at that urban legend critics 24 percent audience oh. 30, audience 37 percent 
That's not right. Oh, come on. That is not correct. Come on. That's that's <laughs> way that's way too low. Even if you think the movie's goofy fun, that's too low. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's way too low. Oh, way well, we have a future episode in the future in the future we we can do. <laughs> there we go. Uh uh but yeah, this was fun. Definitely fun revisiting this with you two. And uh, of course, you can all agree here. Everyone is watching. We all agree that uh is this movie underrated? Yes. In the in the context and in the in the Halloween franchise itself, it is underrated. It is overlooked mm-hmm. in our opinion. And, and so I we want to watch 2018, know. the David Gordon Green one again. Um, now that I've watched this one again, because they're mm-hmm. they're both they both have the yeah. same obje- they both have the same objective <laughs> of giving Laurie Strode the opportunity to finally you know fight him face to face. So so they're they're yeah. You should. I actually watched 2018 right after H2O. Because I wanted to see the finale again before I make yeah. that bold statement that this has the best finale fight face off in the franchise, yeah. and it, it, it does it, it finale. Yeah. yeah, way more satisfying in in H two O. You know what? Technically, this could have been a good versus episode. Actually, H two O and twenty. Yeah, <laughs> can't do it now. We can't do it now because yeah. we already talked Too about late, it. Man. But that would have been good. But it's definitely a lot of fun uh, revisiting this with you two badasses and uh i did do a poll at the last minute just for fun and let's see if the internet uh thinks uh h2o is underrated good look at that they feel it's underrated too check that out i was kind of surprised actually (laughs) (laughs) i thought i thought it was yeah i thought it was going to be the other way uh but yeah this was a lot of fun this was a blast uh, thanks everyone, all you badasses and channel members and patrons that help support the channel, keep it going. Y'all know what you need to do. That's right. Follow Owen on the Action Elite Sun. That's right. He's got phenomenal content over there. What do you got coming out uh, soon? Uh, tomorrow What's night next? we're doing a live stream on our YouTube channel. We're going to be talking about Miami Vice, which is one of my favorite TV shows because I never left the 80s. Uh, and then Friday night, we're going to be doing a retrospective on the Daniel Craig, James Bond movies after we see No Time to Die on Wednesday. So that's what we're going to do. There you go. Week. And also follow April Wright. Her Instagram page is in the description, excuse me, description box below. Follow her. She's got, I'm sure she's got phenomenal stuff coming up. We are rooting for both of you. That's right. Huge success, but this was a lot of fun talking movies, as always. And I know you guys will be back again, because Samurai keeps bugging you. <laughs> thank you, <Ernest. laughs> and, what, uh, but and, if, and if you're into this, watch my documentary, Stunt Women, because we have Jamie Lee Curtis's stunt double, and she talks about doubling Jamie Lee in True Lies and in the uh, helicopter out of the limo. Um, it's insane. Yeah. Oh. Same woman did that that coordinated this. So she, she's. Yeah. I should cover it on my her. website. That's kind of what the site is about. What's it called? A Stunt Woman, The Untold Hollywood Story. And right. Donna Wheeler was the stunt woman who coordinated H2O. I you got to check it out, man. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah, it's a really, really, really great documentary. We got to check that mm-hmm. out. And it blew my mind. Not to get off topic a little bit, when you you know uh, April actually shows footage from the silent era, mm-hmm. bro. There were badass stunt women in oh, the yeah. silent era, bro. <laughs> like I was like, whoa, this is insane, <laughs> blowing my mind. But yeah, uh, they're they're a lot more braver and tougher than Samurai Guy. I tell you that right now. All right, thanks again, April, for hanging out, Owen as well, and uh, tomorrow, guys. We'll see what comes on the channel. We'll see. We might do a stream. We might do some horror movie reviews tomorrow. We'll see. Uh, Wednesday, going to have a special guest early in the morning on the podcast at 11 a.m. Thursday's Versus at 6 p.m. Keeping it horror. That's right, this week. And uh, Friday, we have another special guest. So, busy week for the channel. Thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Oh, Donna Keegan. I got her name wrong the whole time. I'm, I'm, I'm Donna Keegan. <laughs> okay, okay, I didn't end it yet. <laughs> Donna Keegan. I, I had Wheeler in my head. Donna Keegan. <laughs> She'll beat me up.